If you want to keep any group suppressed, create a victim mentality within them. Teach them that they are victims, that they cannot overcome the oppressors, that they are um, a product of society gone wrong. And once individuals internalize this victim mentality, you got them. They're more easily uh, controlled, they're more easily influenced, and they're more easily kept, kept in check because they, have, they feel powerless because you have gotten them to believe that they are a victim. And this happens in all sectors of life, from politics um, to education to families, social circles, everything. In one way or another, in subtle ways, we all play the role of a victim. And I think the biggest, most empowering example is the victim mentality we have by what happens in our life. And we blame our happiness and unhappiness on external things. So when, there were, when we're in a beautiful relationship, we feel good inside. Our mind processes it and says, oh, this is a wonderful experience. And we feel light and free. Everything we internalize, we give power to the external world. So, for example, if we're planning a picnic and we've spent all this time arranging the picnic and this beautiful picnic we're going to have and we go outside to start the picnic and it starts raining. And then we get so upset and we start to get frustrated and go, oh, how could it rain? I've been planning this picnic and this was going to be so romantic or this is going to be so special and now it's raining. And we blame our unhappiness or our frustration on the rain. It has nothing to do with the rain. The rain is just rain. It's, not, it's neutral. It's not good. It's not bad. It's just rain falling from the sky. Whereas another person can internalize and say, oh, this is a wonderful opportunity. We can run around and dance naked in the rain. Or we can go uh, sit inside by the fire and listen to the raindrops. So... One interpretation is a victim, and another interpretation is empowerment. And we do this especially with people. We blame people for affecting our moods. We blame people for making us unhappy. We blame people for hurting our feelings. And we essentially hand over, say, here, take my life energy, take my, my power, take my inner peace, take my happiness, I give it to you, and do what, with it what you may. We hand over our spiritual well-being to other people because we blame them or the external circumstance instead of reflect, looking within us and reflecting on that and saying, what did I do to create this emotion, this feeling of depression, sadness, happiness, whatever? Your brain is an amazing instrument and it's like a computer. It takes in data and processes data. Because really, when you think about it, I mean, on a real high level of enlightenment scale, life is really neutral. And it's our brain. And start with the small things. Because I know things like war and stuff like that, it's really hard for us to grasp. How could that be neutral? But let's take with the small things. Traffic, money problems, stress, and all these things. All these things are neither good or bad. They're just what is. I heard, uh, I was talking to a, a, um, a Buddhist teacher and he said, some Zen monks will pray for problems because it strengthens their spiritual muscle, that they in, invite problems and they welcome problems. Well, that person's going to have a completely different spiritual and inner reaction to those problems than somebody that says uh, be, becomes a victim and says, well, that could, that." cause my unhappiness or this is the reason I'm sad or this and so to regain control of our inner world our inner universe is to no longer play victim and saying and to take responsibility and saying how am I processing this information that's coming through because all it is is just images coming through your mind or words auditory words that you hear in your brain processes and what generally happens is we have triggers this person says this, this person said that, and it did this to me, or this happened, and I'm happy, this happened, and I'm sad. 
And to live life like that, no wonder America needs so many drugs and medication because we're tossed to and fro like a reed in the wind. We're just shh, 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 and there's no stability. And the way to regain stability is saying, observing the mind. Um, Sally Kemp had a great quote, it's hard to fight an enemy who has outposts in your mind. And that's really the source of our inner world, of our of our happiness, is our mind. So taking that data and saying, okay, how is that data going to be processed? And it's not forcing it. You can't force yourself to process the data in a positive, you know, if something negative happen, happens to you, the worst thing you could do is say, okay, I'm going to be happy about this. I'm going to be happy about this. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is observe the source. Observe the source of where those feelings within you are coming from. It's not coming from anything external. It has nothing to do with that. It has to come with internal. There's a book called Man's Search for Meaning, Viktor Frankl. He was in the Holocaust, survived horrific conditions, and was able to find meaning being in a, in a, a survivor, a Holocaust survivor he was in a prison camp. He was able to find meaning from that. And so what that tells me, we don't have anything. We don't struggle with those kinds of horrific experiences. But our everyday experiences can be lessons. And instead of label, labeling it good, bad, and then being triggered to a reaction, we just kind of remain neutral. And we observe the mind. Okay, I can see my mind is, wants to trigger you know, fear, or my mind wants to trigger worry, or my mind wants to trigger stress. And observe it. And as you observe your mind, it's kind of like when I was a kid, I used to bug my sister. You know, I'd, try, I'd tease her, or I would make jokes <laughs> at her, and all these, you know, little things that, that brothers do to annoy their sister. And... I could always see I would be able to get a reaction and that would egg me on to do it more. And she got wise. One day she just learned to ignore me and she just completely ignored me. And so I would sit there and make my jokes or do the teasing or do whatever the stuff I usually did. And she would ignore me. And eventually I stopped doing it. And the mind's the same way. We get caught up in the dialogue, the internal dialogue of the mind. And most people, it's completely unconscious. We have no idea that the mind is really taking over of our spiritual state. And once we observe the mind and say, okay, oh, my mind is experiencing fear. Hmm, it's saying this. Okay, that's interesting. And we're not trying to repress it. We're not trying to fight it. We're not resisting it, observing it. And as we observe it, at first it's very hard. And maybe you'll only be able to observe it, you know, a couple minutes a day. But as you continue to get to practice this skill in questioning, oh, where is this coming from? Oh, it's coming from my mind. And then there becomes a disconnection. Your, your spirit, your spiritual well-being is not so interconnected with the mind. And the mind is neurotic. It it's, has so many fears and so much negative energy that it pumps through your spirit that it weighs us down heavily. So... This is freedom. This is liberation because we no longer are victims. We are free to control our own spiritual destiny just by how we process the information, just through observation and just through stillness. And as you disengage from the mind, what happens? It frees up the resources to become more spiritually strong. That muscle, that spiritual muscle is, getting, is being worked out and become stronger. We usually work out our mind and are so mind identified that that's what becomes strong and most predominant in our lives and it takes over most people's lives. But once we disengage with that, strengthen the spiritual muscle through stillness, it's amazing. Man, life takes on a whole new beauty, magic and radiance. I mean, you go outside and the flowers and the trees take on a whole new color and vibrance. It's exhilarating. Let me know how it goes. Thanks for watching.